Hi, my name is Dr. Mary Salcedo, and I'm going to talk to you today about journeying to the center of a wing vein, visualizing 3D wing networks of grasshoppers. Um, and so here you're seeing a somewhat cosmic view of the tracheal system inside an entire grasshopper hind wing. So it's a little obvious, but we know that insects depend on their wings to perform behaviors. Specifically, they depend on functioning wing mechanics in order to bend and twist and grab that prey that like the dragonfly just did. So wings are not just tubes and membrane, rather they're extensions of the living systems, the respiratory circulatory systems of the insect into the wing. And so if you were to take a slice of a wing, you'd actually see that there's space for hemolymph, insect blood, trachea, the respiratory system, and nerves. If you take another slice of that, you'd see embedded resolin marked in blue and purple here. So resolin is a um, super elastic protein that needs hemolymph in order to function at its highest elasticity because it's a hydrogel. So all this to say that hemolymph is important for the tissues in the wing and we know from um, previous studies that pumping organs, so our thoracic wing hearts, actually affect the volumes of trachea hemolymph in the wings. So you can see in the costa and subcostal veins, these are leading edge veins, at different pulses and pauses of pumping organs, we can see a change in the hemolymph volume. And then the cross section on the right, you can see all of the different types of tissues you might see in the Drosophila uh, wing vein. So here, you're looking at fluorescent particles marching along with the active current in a grasshopper wing. So my previous work has involved tracking the circulation and flow within um, Schistocirca americana's wings, showing that it's an active movement. So I study insect wings in three parts. I look at the physiology of how the wings expand and form um, external internal morphologies. I look at how flows are produced by the insect into the wings. And I look at how pesticides affect wing health and function. And I study these things through a few different methods. I look at, I use fluorescent microscopy, so the injection of those particles into the wing. Um, I also use uh, resources at national laboratories like Argon. And today I'm gonna to discuss how I have used their micron level resolution to understand the internal morphology of insect wing veins. So we know from just simple models, well, it's not simple to do it, but we know that if we add hemolymph into our models of wing veins, that mechanical performance of a flapping wing is better. So mechanical instabilities reduce, things like flutter decrease, and so incorporating that physiology is important. But what do we actually know about the three-dimensional wing structure of insect wings? Um, we know that 3D networks can help us understand damage and disease as they do with this mouse model here where you can see the micro CT 3D reconstruction and some of the histology slices and it can further inform how treatments affect that network and how we can analyze that. So this is a valuable way of looking at a network. So our questions kind of run towards what is the network of hemolymph and trachea in a wing? Do we know this? We don't. Our previous understanding of networks has just been in a two-dimensional sense. So thinking about an insect wing as a series of shapes put together, how can we understand that diversity? Um, and our understanding of circulation is rather limited. I just wrote a review on that because uh, we only know flows in insect wings in a few different species. So if we're thinking about all of these dynamic factors in a wing, do we even understand the whole internal morphology of an insect wing? Uh, how about delivery of oxygen and resources? And then finally, how do all of these things factor into flapping flight? So in order to answer some of these questions and at least get back at the physiology one, which will feed back into the others, we can go to Argonne National Laboratory. This is a kilometer wide synchrotron and specifically go to Beamline 2B to understand um, and use their micro CT facility. So we brought two species of grasshopper there, Schistocirca americana and Melanopis sanguinopes. Um, we brought them for their disparity in size, but also because they are two key pest species in North America. 
So we quickly removed wings off of grasshoppers and we immediately put them in to scan. So here you can see that I'm removing the wing. We brought in recently deceased schistocircas and live um, sanguinopes. They were anesthetized before dealing with them. And then we put our samples in the beam line so that they could be measured and perfectly centered. And with that, taking one of our sample slices out of a four wing, do we see what we want to see? Well, immediately we see space for trachea and hemolymph, which is exciting. So this is like histology section, but um, continuous. And with that, we can then feed it into a reconstruction software like Slicer Morph, give it to a team of eager young scientist undergrads, and hopefully get something from all of this data. Because, ha, is there a lot of data? So let's consider for a moment the data set. One wing is up to 15 scans. Each scan is about 1600 images. Raw, that means one scan is 40 gigs. And then we try to take it down through cropping. So just a few days at Argon, we ended up with 16 terabytes of amazing data. And that is really exciting because we have a comparative approach where we can look at both Schistocirca americana and also sanguinopes and we have the wing pad structures of sanguinopes. So this is exciting, but there's a lot to process. So we started with that collection. I've been processing images. This is an ongoing project, segmenting and visualizing, which I'll show you some today. And then I'm really excited for the volume analysis and then future directions. So we just start with cropping images, removing all of the speckling and artifacts and deleting that preparation tube, because then you can get something really cool um, from this sample scan of that 3D structure where you can start to see some of the sensory hairs um, and then you can see this structure in space and understand more about its morphology. I have been dealing since the pandemic hit with just my laptop and realizing it's not enough power to reconstruction visualize the entire wing. So that's been a process that's led to some cool collaborations and potential cloud computing here. So if we were to look at two aspects of the wing, let's look at the cord and let's look at the span. So here, I've just highlighted some of the sh shapes of cross sections of veins across the cord here. So if we were to take a slice at that exact spot and highlight all of the cross sections of the veins across the cord of the wing, and then zoom in on them, we'd see the sizing and shape change is really interesting. So this is one feature that we're going to pull out from all of these scans to understand how, when we um, deform the wing, do these veins deform in a similar way. Now, if we're to look at the span of the wing, let's go the other direction and just highlight the costal vein for a moment. So the costal vein is that leading edge vein that confronts flow. It's often the stiffest and biggest vein. And we were to take slices and look at actually all of the different scans across the wing, you start to see immediately that there is a dramatic change between the ratio of hemolymph to trachea and vein wall as we go from wing base to wing tip. And if we segment that, so actually to specifically show you the trachea, the hemolymph, the vein wall, we start to understand the volumes there. And so segmenting is literally just like partitioning out the shapes and, and features that you want. Here on the left movie, I'm doing it with just the tracheal tubes. And then once you're done, you have this segmentation stack of images where then you can start to do the exciting coding of blob analysis and network analysis and actually understand how that is recreated in space. Before you start coding though, you can just look at it in 3D space and see features like these primary trachea branches um, moving into secondary branches. That's exciting because now we're seeing, okay, how is this folded up wing actually, um, how is oxygen being delivered to each part of it? So this is kind of a slower, less cosmic version of what you saw on slide one of the entire trachea network in a grasshopper hindwing. So I just showed you a really high resolution data where you can see those nice branches between primary and secondary tubes. Um, here I downsampled because remember a wing is 24,000 images. So I can't do that high resolution segmentation 
the entire time. So here I segmented by about 50 micron chunks and you can start to see it's not perfect. I'm new to this. Some of the alignment is off. So this is 15 scans stacked and aligned together. But it really does show the connection. And in some of them, it actually shows how the tracheal tubes twist inside of the same vein and then branch apart, which is pretty exciting. So where are we going with this? Well, now that we have the 3D models, um, and some more accurate 3D models, which I'm about to show you, we can start to feed into computational fluid dynamics softwares. And combined with my previous work, we can understand how flow is moving through the wing and how all of these shapes, um, shapes of the cross veins, the hemolymph volume, the trachea volume, might be changing during flapping flight. So here you can start to see the different shapes where we have this about 200 micron costal vein, this is the large leading edge vein, the trachea, the hemolymph, and vein and outer cuticle diameters. And this is exciting because this is showing us actually real numbers and real shapes for a continuous morphology that we have never had before. Um, and with that, I would like to thank the Soha Lab, especially my collaborators, Dr. Jake Soha, my collaborators at Argon, Pasha Shevchenko, our grasshopper suppliers, our future collaborators with the computing power at Rice, Dr. Corey Evans, um, and my undergraduate research team, the Wing Team.